All right, guys, welcome to Properties of ex, uh, Exponential Functions. And today, the essential understanding is that the factor A in Y equals AB to the X can stretch, shrink, or reflect the parent function Y equals B to the X. Um, and so we're going to concentrate on that today. And then we're also going to talk about some translations. So in the last section, we talked about um, just graphing parent functions. And now we're actually going to move that parent function around using translations and, and, and vertical stretching and shrinking. Uh, so just know when a is less than zero, uh, the function is going to be reflected over the x-axis. This will change the uh, range of your function. So you've got to be very careful. When a is negative, you're switching that domain from being y equals or y is greater than zero to y is less than zero. Uh, when a is greater than 1, this graph is going to be stretched. That means it grows faster. And when a is between 0 and 1, the graph will be uh, compressed. It will grow at a little bit slower rate. Now, just because a is, be is, is between 0 and 1 does not mean that's going to be decay. So you have to be very careful. Your b value tells you whether or not your function will be growth or decay. So just be very careful of that. So um, let's look at some examples of these functions. Okay, so in number one, it asks here, example, how does the graph of y equals negative one-third times three to the x compare to the parent function? Okay, so when I look at this, it's like, well, what is the parent function? So step number one, I, I tell myself, what is the parent function? We know it's y equals b to the x. So really, you have to identify b. In this case, it's three. So y equals three to the x is the parent function. Now, I don't think I would probably have to graph this in order to see what's going on or what would happen. A is one-third, so the graph is going to shrink compared to the parent function. A is negative, so the graph is going to be reflected over the x-axis. Okay, so those are the two main points. Okay, and it's also shrinking all these values by uh, negative one-third. Negative one-third. So what I did here is I just made a table of values from negative two to two. Here's the parent function values. And here is my equation values that I was given. Okay, so we think about it: nine and negative three. The graph is taking negative one third of these y values. That's what's going on: negative one third of all those y values. So it's a shrink. Okay, you know it's a shrink because at the same value, these are less. Okay, and they're reflected. So in the red, there's the parent function y equals three to the x. I went ahead and graphed that. My scales by two on the y. And then here is my uh, y equals negative one third times three to the x. Okay, b is b is positive, so this is still growth, but it's growing negatively. That's a growth model here. Okay, so it's growing slow, more slowly than this. This should go up faster uh, than our, our blue graph because our a value is negative and it's less than one, and it's between zero and one. That absolute value, it's a fraction. Okay. So it's growing much slower. So that's what the graphs look like. So you can graph and it'll help you kind of figure out, hey, what's going on? Easiest way to graph any of these, make a table. You can start with your parent function and go from there. But uh, so just to summarize this, uh, the graph's being reflected over the x-axis and it's growing more slowly. It's growing at a negative one-third. It, it's a negative one-third. So it, it, it's causing all these y values to shrink um, by a third and being reflected, making them negative. Uh, in this case. So uh, that's how we can compare that to the parent function. Okay, um, so then we want to talk about, well, you have stretching and shrinking and reflections with A, but then you have H and K. H and K always play a role, and they're the same role. H moves horizontally, okay, left and right, and K moves up and down. Subtraction sign, you move right. If you see an addition sign there, you move uh, left. It's the same that we did with parent uh, quadratics polynomials, all those, H and K are going to behave the same way. Okay, so just so you know, a horizontal shift, Y equals AB to the X minus H, is also the same as a vertical stretch or compression. They rewrote the equation as Y equals AB to the negative H times B uh, to the X there. So what happens here is you just add those two when you distribute. This is multiplication. When you multiply two numbers with the same base, you add them together, so you get x minus h. So they just actually reworked this equation, and it's the horizontal shift is the same as a vertical stretch. I don't really apply this, but I wanted to let you know I still think of my shifts. I, I don't switch it up very much. Uh, a vertical shift, the other thing here is a vertical shift is going to change that y-intercept. Okay, It's no longer going to be y equal, or not, not the y-intercept, I'm sorry, uh, the horizontal asymptote. 
uh, the asymptote is going to be k now. And that's what this second point says. It says, hey, look, if you have a vertical shift, your horizontal asymptote is going from 0 to whatever k is. So k will switch your horizontal asymptote. So here I've shown a couple, uh, uh, another example, graph each of these functions, and their translations were moving, were moving left, okay, left and right. So uh, y equals 2 to the uh, x minus 4, and then b, y equals 4 to the x plus 2. So the first thing you want to do is, well, identify what is going on here. What is my graph supposed to do? Now, x minus 4, you see that subtraction sign, you're taking away 4. x take away 4. So if I take $4 from you, Okay, I'm still taking a positive amount. That 4 is positive. The operation is subtraction. So you're going to move 4 units right. Just think of inside parentheses there, whatever is the operation, do the opposite of that. So it's subtraction, so we're going to move 4 units right. So I plot y equals 2 to the x, that's the parent function, and I move all my points 4 to the right. I plot 3 points here, and I just moved them to the right. There's my graph, y equals 2 to the x minus 4, very simple. Here, 4 to the x plus 2, I'm moving 2 units left, okay? So I graph the parent function in blue and move all those points 2 to the left, and then I'm done. So in summary, with the graphing, you've got the parent function y equals b to the x. If you stretch, shrink, or reflect the graph, it's going to be y equals ab to the x. And when you add your translations, the, the, the function becomes y equals ab to the x minus h plus k. So that's the full equation, full exponential uh, equation there. So that's just a summary of what each of these, uh, the th things we've talked about and what their respective equations look like. The last uh, example here is, is this uh, area equals a equals pert. Um, it's compound interest. And the compound interest, when you see compounding continuously, this is the equation you use. In the last video, we looked at um, an exponential growth or decay model. We had a of t equals uh, a times the quantity 1 plus r raised to the t. This is different. If you hear or see compounded continuously, that's the only time you're going to use this equation. Okay? So if I deposited 3 grand into this, um, paying 5% interest that's compounded continuously, how much will you have after four years? So A is the amount after T years. P is the principal, the amount you invested. E is a number, it's 2.71, and we'll talk more about that in class. R is the rate in, uh, as a, a decimal, and, um, and T is time. So we just use this formula, 3,000 E to the 0 .05, your rate is a percent, um, times 4. So you get 3,000 e to the 2 tenths. e to the 2 tenths times 3,000 gives me 3,664. Um, be very careful about compounding continuously. A lot of people always say, oh, it's way, it's, you get way more money. That's not always the case. Um, so uh, that is the uh, exponential models that we were talking about, a little more in depth about the, the, the translations. We'll more, work more with translations in class, ex especially the, the, the up and down graphs. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, go ahead and type them below or email me at nicholas.bennett at dc.gov.